Hey everybody, got another how-to video for you here. This is going to be a how-to on something which is, you would think would be patently obvious in most cases, but, and it is sort of, um, how to convert a glue-in neck to a bolt-on. So, the basic deal is you've got like a body and a neck, from a kit, or you made them, or it's a parts caster, or whatever. This thing's heavy. It's a real Les Paul. And whatever you're building, you know, it's designed or originally was a glue in. And you're going to bolt it in instead. You know, you don't like messing with gluing. You're afraid you'll mess it up and then won't be able to undo it. Or you want to take advantage of the of the you know the advantages of a bolt on versus a glue in the advantages being that you can replace the neck you can shim the neck in order to change the angle this way you can loosen it up in sand or whatever in order to change the angle this way you know if for some reason it's cock you can straighten that out too if you need to shift it left or right a millimeter or two in order to get better string alignment, you can do all that kind of stuff with a bolt-on. You can't do any of that stuff with a glue-on neck. You know, it's one time, it's got to be perfect, and it's got to stay perfect for the life of the instrument, or you're screwed, and you got to unglue it. And ungluing is a whole lot more work than unscrewing, so that's the case for converting, for why one would want to convert. So, how do you convert? Well... I mean, if you've got, you know, something that's like a more or less normal neck, you can see this thing isn't exactly normal, then it's pretty straightforward. You just kind of take your two pieces and you put them together like this, and you get your plate, you slap it on where it's going to go, and you mark your holes, and you get your scratch all or center punch, and you punch your marks for starting your drill. You get your drill and you drill your pilot holes and then you put in your neck screws and you're done. So what do you do when you got something like this where the neck is actually narrower than the plate? Well in that case what you do is you you can do a uh, you can do a two screw neck joint. And I'm about to do one here which is what made me think of shooting this video and uh, I just finished doing this one here and this is a Les Paul Kids supposedly even though it seems to be full scale length and yeah this is what it looks like when it's done but sorry these screws were painted to match the color scheme of this particular guitar and it's all flush so you don't really feel anything. But, uh, yeah, so the basic approach, now if you're doing a four screw, like I said, you, you start by laying it out, you want to put down some tape so you can mark on stuff without messing up your finish. And then you put your plate down where it's going to go, mark your four holes, get your, uh, get your scratch all center punch, and punch your holes for starting for your drill. And then you drill your pilot holes to the appropriate size for your screws, for your neck screws. And away you get your get your wax, right? And away you go. Get your screwdriver and away you go. Now in this case, for for a two-hole one, what I do is first first you put your tape on, same as normal, but you don't have a plate in order to tell you where to put the screws. Now, I suppose you could use the spacing of a plate if you've got an extra plate in order to decide how far apart to put them, if you wanted to do that kind of thing. Or I think the spec is like two inches or something for a fender plate. You can always look that up or measure one. But what I do is uh, I measure the width of the heel and both this one and that guitar are a 55 millimeter so that tells me how far over I come in order to get a center line on this, which I then transfer to this. Use a 
use a triangle and a block here in order to get the triangle flat. And that way I can strike a center line right here. And then I look at my heel and say, okay, if my heel starts here and ends here, then how much beef do I want to leave at this end and at this end? And in, in this particular case for with this guitar and that guitar kit, these are both Muse Ladies. Um, nice too, check this out. These things have real caps that are up to a half inch thick at their thickest point. Both of these kits, both of these LPs. I didn't realize that when I stained them. I thought they were veneers, so I used the, the no sand method. But yeah, these things seem to be real caps. Because you can see, like if you look here, you can see there's flame there and the flames continue through the grain down the side so yeah it's the real McCoy man I was very impressed but anyway I digress um yeah so you so you get it laid out like that I decided to leave 15 millimeters on either end for beef and mark my holes and center punch them and now uh, th these have already then then in order to get everything all nice and accurate what I do is I hold the whole thing together as one piece and I hold it with one with my left hand and I drill both the body and the neck at once with using my right hand to hold the drill and I do that with like uh, the third smallest bit in the index in order to get a pilot hole going then I'll find a bit that's appropriate for the size of the shank portion here the solid portion where the threads are and I'll get a second larger bit which matches this side here just below the head and I'll drill all the way through with the smaller of the two and then I'll just drill the body with the larger of the two and that way it's only screwing into the neck and it's just squeezing the body which is the way you want the fastener to work. And so that's about where I'm at right now. I need to, I've got my screws and now I need to get the drill bit index and find the, the smaller and the larger drill bits that I'm going to use. I don't remember what I used on that one there. Now this guitar here, this is another example of the same thing in a build that I just completed a few days ago. This is my PRS kit. And uh, once again, it's a, uh, it's a glue-in design by default. And once again, it's been converted to a bolt-on. Now this particular one, being a PRS, it had a, it had a regular kind of heel on it so a four bolt would actually fit so I went ahead and put a four bolt neck plate kind of thing going on on it so yeah so this is another this is an example of a four bolt type now over here if you look at this check this out now you see here on this one I've got just these two bolts showing, and I think I'm just going to leave that that way. On this one here, I haven't decided yet, but I can either leave two bolts showing, and they would be gold against this brown, which would look pretty classy. The whole thing is done in a combination of, like, gold and cream, as I recall, with maybe a bit of silver. And, uh, and then the front of it's... Uh, it's a yellow, it's a brown yellow burst kind of a thing. So, so that's the general color scheme for the guitar. But what I was also thinking is that after I put those two screws in, since they fit flush, I can then mark it out for a regular plate, like this plate, that would cover those screws and then drill it 
for this plate as well and then install this plate over those screws. These screws actually hold the neck in and this is basically a decorative cover plate because it doesn't it doesn't really the screws don't it's like these two screws come right at the very edge of the neck and these two screws come kind of like at the very edge of the body and and none of them really one pair of screws grabs onto more or less the neck and nothing else and one pair grabs onto the body and nothing else and so it doesn't really work out too well as a actual holding plate but but for a decorative plate it would work great or another thing you can do is you would take like this thing and take these screws and cut them off short and then just drill little short holes and screw them in so that it, you wouldn't have to get all the way down into the depths of the neck joint here which is really just probably better because you're not removing material and replacing it with screws that don't really have enough enough wood around them to bite into and do any any real good so and you know if these had not a lot of thread on them then you could you know just make the holes very shallow cut them off and then just put a drop of CA glue in and then just push them in and then when you wanted to take them out again you just twist them with a screwdriver you break that little bead of CA glue and the things would just fall right out again and then you could take the plate off and and get at the real neck screws behind it so yeah that's the basic idea and I'm gonna go ahead and fish for some drill bits and I'll be back in a minute okay that's the smaller of the two drill bits this one will go all the way through up to the tape mark these two holes it's gonna require two hands okay that's that set all the way through and now for the bigger one this is the bigger one here and it's only going to go through these guys not these guys these guys are already set for the thread size so now we need to enlarge these holes for this guy for this end There we go, just drilled them out to uh, that larger size. <laughs> and uh, get the wax and it's time to screw it together. Okay, got the wax, peeled the tape off, screws are waxed up, got the screwdriver. Okay, got them started by hand and now it's just a little quality time with the screwdriver. Since they're painted, I'll need to be very gentle and careful that I don't chip the paint. And that's the basic idea there. I need to get a slightly larger or better shape, something that's in better shape than this particular Phillips in order to finish torquing them down flush. But also, if they give me problems, I can also go a little deeper on the pilot hole, the smaller of the two. And I can also give it just a little bit of chamfer, perhaps even by hand with a drill bit, because it wouldn't really take much in order to get these screws to go ahead and seat flush. But I think just having good proper size Phillips for it will get it done without chipping up the paint. So, But that's just a, a technicality of, of worn out tools here at the shop. It's got nothing really to do with anything. Um lesson learned always have high quality good Phillips on hand when you're working on guitars it's the most common tool on a guitar is a Phillips head screwdriver so but I think you get the idea and you know from here if you wanted to cover it up with like a whatever put that plate there's a plate yeah if you wanted to cover it up with a plate then you would just you know slap it down over this thing get these guys down to the flush slap it down over that mark out the holes Go ahead and drill them, wax up the screws, and bolt it on. And then it would look like a true bolt-on. Actually, it might look pretty good with this copper plate here. Copper kind of goes well with the brown. But, 
I don't know. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with this thing. I think I'm going to. I think I might just leave it gold. The gold looks pretty nice too, and it's pretty understated. Shows off more wood. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the with the way the stain on this thing turned out. This is a this is a key to wood dye and a like a light to medium brown, and uh, and then uh, two coats of linseed oil. Found out the trick with linseed oils. You put it on like ultra ultra thin. I'm putting this stuff on with wadded up printer paper, and uh, and then just kind of you know smear it all over just a thin coat get any excess wipe off any excess I can with dry paper and then let it cure for like two days at least I've got low temperatures and high humidity here at the shop right now during winter so but yeah that seems to work and you get nice results you get some sheen going on this is only two coats too you get some sheen going on you get you get water protection and stain protection as well but you can also see and feel grain too, so really quite pleased. At first I wasn't I wasn't getting good at all results with linseed or tongue or anything like this. Of course, I, well, how, what it turned out was that I was putting on way too much. If you take a look at these things like, you know, True Oil and Crimson Guitars version of True Oil, um, they're linseed-based products, but apparently they have uh, dryers additives in them that mean that you can you know, dose the heck out of it which really doesn't seem to work well for real linseed but real linseed is a whole lot less expensive I can get like you know a gallon of linseed for the price of one little bottle of the other stuff so and for a gallon of linseed when you're putting the stuff on you know a film layer two two maybe three film layer coats to get a to get a satin finish on a guitar, you know, you'd be able to do a hundred guitars off of just one gallon of linseed oil easily. So, so yeah, I'm, and you, and it's not a matter of you put a ton of it on and wait and then wipe it all off again and throw most of it away. With the linseed, it's like, you know, you put on like maybe, You might put on two capfuls on a whole guitar in, for a single coat for everything except for the fretboard. You can probably put it on a fretboard too. I've never tried it, but I've lacquered fretboards, I've enameled fretboards, I've acrylic fretboards, and I've used mineral oil on fretboards, and then I've used various and sundry fretboard oils on fretboards. Uh, these days, I either, I would either, if I was going for finished fretboard, I'd lacquer it, probably. And if I was going for unfinished, I'd use mineral oil. USP grade. Uh, thinnest viscosity possible. I'm using 90 grade right now, so. But anyway, um, I think that's going to do it for this video. You're now seeing the ins and outs of the bolt-on neck thing. There's not much to it. The big, the big deal is just be accurate in laying out your holes and be accurate in your drilling. And be sure to drill both the body and the neck simultaneously and that way everything lines up automatically and you have no issues. And that's pretty much it. So, And like I said, there, there are a number of advantages to bolt-on versus glue-on. You can adjust, you can adjust the angle you know, in all different directions as needed. You can uh, you can actually scoot it a little from side to side too. Um, it's easier to do depending on like what kind of plate and screws and such you're using. But uh, but it's possible without you know having like screws show or having it be wiggly or whatever. So yeah. There are things to be said for the bolt-on neck. I'm not so sure that, you know, we're all just going out and bolting a new neck on when it, when we need to refret our guitars. But, which is supposedly the main reason why Leo came up with the concept. But, but anyway, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it.
Um, you've seen me do one here. You saw what a finished one looks like once they're all flush. You've actually also seen a four bolt version too, as well. So, so well, until the next video, whatever that is, I've got I've got a couple guitar builds. I've got one uploading now. The Cowboys guitar build is uploading now. And then I've got the X9, and I got this PRS here. I got a post videos on both of those builds. The X9 is interesting. It's, uh, where's the X9? The X9 is that thing right there. How do you zoom this? Zoom, zoom, zoom. There we go. Okay, this brown guitar right back here behind the Coca-Cola box is the X9. And I've already shot a little bit of video on it. It's, uh, this is the one that has the aluminum angle stock neck, which is uh, an amazing discovery. Who would have thought that you could go down to your local hardware store, buy a piece of aluminum angle stock for like $17, and get like, I forget how many necks you get out of it. I think you get three or something like that, three or four, at least two. Um, I think it's three though. And yeah, you get, basically you get all you need, everything you need, you just cut it to length and you've got three aluminum necks right there, ready to go. And then all you gotta do is just slap a fretboard on it with some CA glue and done deal all day long. So yeah, I'll be shooting a video on that build and I'll probably just, I guess I should do a dedicated how-to on how to make one of those aluminum necks. So, yeah. Guess I got a couple more videos to shoot. But anyway, until the next one. Yeah, I've already burned all my bandwidth this month again, too. So that's going to kind of, it's, you know, it's hard to get motivated when it's going to tie up the, the computer for half an hour to post a 10-minute video. So, at least it's, it's hard to get motivated to post them, and I, and I suppose I can shoot them, but, but anyway, I'm going to shut up now, and I'll see everybody in the next one. Everybody have a good one. Get my closing credit shot here. I need what, these little things flash up for 20 seconds here, so. I just discovered there's like, no microphone input jack on my computer. It's an ultra cheap thing purchased by accident on at Walmart. It's supposed to be the expensive one. They put the wrong box on the shelf. So now I've got to get a real computer if I want to be able to record any audio unless I want to get some kind of external USB box thing converter. Screw that. Anyway, see you all in the next one.